My goal for you after watching this video is first, a very pretty vintage hairstyle, and second, a better understanding of how small changes in styling pin curls between different hair types can give you better results. Hello, if you are new to my channel, my name is Lauren, and I am a hair and makeup artist who is obsessed with the way that hair was historically styled, and love to recreate these looks using both vintage and modern techniques. And honestly, there's a lot of crossover between those two things. I was going back and forth on when I was going to post my next pin curl video. I knew it was coming since the Primrose pin curl set is my most popular video. Also, that Primrose video is a really good place for you to start if you are completely new to pin curls. So I asked in my community feed, um, asked you to answer a survey on what video you guys wanted to see next. And the pin curl video was a pretty resounding yes. So now, now is when I'm doing a new pin curl video. If you voted for the history of the 1920s bob hairstyle in that survey, don't worry, that video is coming. It's gonna be really good. Let's get to today's lesson. And as always, please tag me if you do this. I love to see when people try the styles. First, the hair eye candy and our inspiration for today. This is an image I found on the blog Vintage Every Day of actress and vaudevillian Joan Leslie. What do we need to keep in mind while we are working out how to mimic this look? Let's analyze the elements of this top part real quick and please forgive my rudimentary drawing skills. First there is the form or silhouette, the outside lines of the style. It's asymmetric, which I am always a fan of, but even the asymmetry feels balanced. Then there's the texture. And it's two different textures, which adds a feeling of complexity to it. The smooth arcs above the left side of the face and the curl fluff above the right. And last, the movement. The smooth arc draws the eye in and over and around to the curl fluff. We're easing into the world of pin curl patterns with this set, just focusing on the top. It's really good practice. Trying to do too much at first can lead to frustration and quitting. So I'll do the more complicated stuff on top and since we all love a full finished style, the rest of the hair will be set in really basic curls. Shelby and Violet are my hair models today. Come and play with us, Daddy. We're gonna go over the steps and the final hairstyles on them and me, because between the three of us, we represent a really good range of the different hair textures that you might be dealing with. Medium, long and thick, short and very fine. And if your texture is somewhere in the middle, you'll get some tips on how you might need to alter the set to work for you. But don't jump ahead right now. But Lauren, I have long thick hair. I don't really care what you do on some other hair type. You need to see the information at the beginning in order for the information after to make sense. I'm going to cover the basics of the set and brush out on Shelby with the hows and whys, and then cover how I alter the set and the brush out to accommodate long thick hair and short fine hair. The basic tools you will need are a rat tail comb, styling comb, and a hairbrush. You'll also need pins for the curls, which can be basic hairpins, single prong clips, or double prong clips, depending on the hair type and your preference. The wet set itself requires water and setting lotion, and for the brush out, a shaping product like hair cream or pomade will be very helpful. Before I drape her, I just need to show you this vintage cape I picked up at an estate sale. It's very 60s. It's adorable. I'm working first with medium hair texture on a hair mannequin with a modernized layered 1940s haircut. Like I mentioned before, today's video is going to focus on setting the top wave properly, but I know there are some diehard pin curlers out there that want to see how the entire hairstyle came together. For the sake of time, here is a sped up version of the rest of the setting in basic pin curls. This is a quick pin curl set for the back. I just want some curl fluff around the sides and back. You can easily just do this part with rollers or even a curling iron on dry hair and then just dampen the top section for the pin curls. This is also going to help highlight the top curl setting by getting the rest of the hair out of my way. The size of this section is a very important consideration and I'll show you how it needs to be different for longer thick hair and very fine hair. For this medium texture and length, I've parted a two inch deep and three and a half inch wide area. The hair is damp and I have applied setting lotion from the base to the ends. Setting lotion helps hold the curl and makes the hair softer, less stiff. Softer hair is easier to control and mold. 
Going back to the hairstyle of Joan Leslie, the curls must be shaped to mimic the movement of the final hairstyle. A set of curls that create the arc on the left, and another set of curls that become the fluff curls on the right. The order in which I set these curls might look a little strange, like it's backwards. It is the technique I use so that I don't have overlap issues styling the curls around each other. Starting on the right side of the section, or the left side of the screen as you are watching this, this is where the pile of curl fluff will be in the finished style. Part a one by one inch base. Comb it out so that it is at a 135 degree angle out away from the top of the head. Then ribbon the hair with your comb toward the center of the head, just like you would use a pair of scissors to coil a gift ribbon. This ribboning motion starts the curving of the hair, making it easier to curl. Hold the hair section about three inches before the ends. Grab further along at about one inch from the end. Turn it to meet these two spots. Then tuck the end inside the curl. Then work the curl down to the base and pin. This is my method for setting pin curls when I'm not using the roll and go hair tool or the sculpture pin curl tool, which you will see in a few minutes. The two pin curls on this side will be set as on base stand up pin curls rolled away from the ear toward the center of the top of the head. The next curl to roll will be the center back curl. Set this curl at a diagonal. Just give it a little 45 degree counterclockwise turn compared to the first two curls. Now let's start the curls that will form the arc. This setting is a great example of why pin curls can be so special. A pin curl like this makes the entire hair strand part of the sculpture, all the way to the scalp. With rollers and curling irons, that first inch of hair at the base is sort of lost and useless, I think. Studying the shape in Joan Leslie's hairstyle, the arc makes a full half turn, starting at the part and wrapping back around. So that's the direction to take the curl. Directing the hair back and away from the top of the head with over direction so that the curl will lay flat when it is pinned against the scalp. Roll the hair counterclockwise. When you reach the base, pin the curl flat and half on base, meaning it only covers half the base of the hair section. For these flat curls, I am using a basic hair pin. I prefer these over bobby pins or grip pins because they don't pinch the curl and crease it. There are three pin curls left to be styled in the front. To avoid visible gaps at the front hairline, the sectioning of the front pin curls is parted at a diagonal. Set two pin curls in the same method as the one we just finished. Brushed together, these curls will be that clean arc shape. Directing the section back at a diagonal, wrapping the curl counterclockwise, and pinning the curl flat and half on base. The final curl at the front will be part of the curl fluff, but also a transition from the arc curls. Set a stand-up pin curl that rolls toward the forehead. Pay special attention to the space between these two pin curls and keep them close together to avoid gapping at the brush out. With everything curled, hopefully you can see how the setting will form as it curves around. Now we wait for the hair to dry completely. Really? The back pin curls are styled simply. Just take out the pins, finger through the curls to break them up, brush the crown to smooth the hair, then use grip tooth combs to pin back the sides for a traditional 1940s silhouette. So let's brush her out now. Brush the set out starting with the curl fluff on the right side. I'm breaking the curls up using Suavecito hair cream to smooth flyaways and add shine. It is part of their men's hair care line, but the smell is really mild, so I feel like it is a good gender neutral alternative to pomades. Then incorporate that back pin curl in the middle into the curl fluff. Moving on to the curls that will create the arc. The motion of your combing and brushing should follow in the flow of the hairstyle. Use some hair cream or pomade as you work to help hold the shape. This will take some control. Comb and brush the hair together as you guide it into the arc shape. Keep working at it. 
You may need to brush and comb through it several times to hold the shape. Just make sure you are keeping your motion in the direction you want the hair to flow. Last, connect the arc to the curl fluff to appear as if the entire section is one continuous piece. Press down on the arc so that it will hold its form and comb the end of the arc to curve into the curls next to it. Moving on to the methods for long hair, I still encourage you to make sure you watched the steps on the medium length doll as this section will be less in depth. <sighs> Violet. Her hair is a lot longer. Think back to Shelby. Shelby's parting was way over here. It went way back here and then it came back down here. Violet has a ton more long thick hair. Her parting starts over above the eyebrow again, but it only goes back inch and a half, comes over, and then instead of coming over all the way and squaring down, I've actually set a diagonal line right here. If I try to use all the hair back here, it's just too much. I tried it. We gotta go small so that this still looks pretty. Prep the hair with water and setting lotion and give long hair a good brush with a soft bristle brush to distribute the moisture evenly and get any tangles out of the hair. So this long haired girl, she's gonna have five pin curls. That's it, just five. Following the same order as on the Shelby doll, the first pin curl to wrap is the back left pin curl. Separate it from the section with a squared off base shape, but maintain that diagonal parting at the back. Move you over a little bit since your hair's so long. See how those ends are a little, they look dried out a little bit. I don't want to give those ends some extra lotion. All right, her hair's so long, we're using the roll and go. It's pink now. The tool makes wrapping pin curls on longer hair more manageable. Insert the tool through the hair mid shaft. Wrap the ends around the comb teeth. Then roll the tool toward the base, keeping the ends along the curl so that they get locked inside the curl. This pin curl is wrapped the same as the first curl from the Shelby hairstyle. It is an on-base curl rolling clockwise toward the center of the head. The arc for this longer hair will consist of three pin curls set the same as the arc curls I showed you previously in the video on medium hair. They are all over-directed back away from the face and then rolled counterclockwise in toward the top of the head. They are pinned to lie flat half on base. Remember to use diagonal partings at the hairline. The final pin curl at the center of the front is a stand-up pin curl rolled toward the face at a diagonal. Just a quick word on the back. Note that the top curls at the back are set in uniform stand-up pin curls that all roll the same direction. I definitely have an Ethel Merch thing going on today. After the hair was completely dried and cooled, I removed the back rollers and pin curls first to brush out and style. Brush the curls out. I'm using the Suavecito hair cream as a substitute for pomade, distributing it and continuing to brush the curls together. Working around the style, brush everything out into a mass and insert a side comb or bobby pins to hold the side back in this popular vintage style. The biggest hurdle you will have with brushing out the top of this set on long hair is just dealing with the weight and the weight and weight. So this will be your best way to attack the brush out. For your arc curls on the right, give them a brush out to start forming the curls into the wave, but then clip them off to the side. Then brush and style the curl fluff. I'm using some hair cream to separate the curls and add shine. Pin the curls roughly to the spot where you want them to sit. With the arc piece, brush the mass together to get the base smooth. Over directing the piece, insert the teeth of a comb on the flat side of the arc and direct the arc into its first curve. When it's in the shape you like, gently remove the comb and arrange the end curls on the side, trying not to disturb the placement of the arc. Bobby pin the curls and use a duckbill clip to set the arc. Now let's do my hair. My fine hair. 
give you an idea of the texture of my hair. It gets really fine once it reaches the ends. To give more volume to the top pin curl set on this fine hair, I am using a larger section to incorporate. And I'll create more pin curls on the right side. After giving the hair section a thorough saturation of water and setting lotion, start as before with the first pin curls on the right side of the head. I find rolling pin curls on my fine hair to be much easier with the Sculpture Pin Curl tool. Or you can use the same methods I showed with the Shelby doll earlier in the video. Insert the tool through the hair about one and a half inches from the ends. Wrap the ends around the comb teeth. Then roll the tool toward the base, keeping the ends along the curl so they get locked inside. Remove the tool while holding onto the hair and pin the curl in place. I'm making three pin curls the same here. They are on base stand-up curls rolling away from the ear toward the center of the top of the head. Now at the back, carving out a small base, I'm setting a small stand-up pin curl that rolls toward the forehead that will be part of the arc. Set the last pin curl at the back to over direct and roll counterclockwise toward the center of the head to brush into the arc shape. I'll actually use my phone to take a photo of some of the more hard to see pin curls to make sure I am on the right track. At the front, set another curl for the arc section of the hairstyle, rotating counterclockwise and sitting half on base. The final curl in the center front is a stand up pin curl rolling at a diagonal toward the face. So I know. It uh, looks a little on the messy side, but you can still see the pattern work. So we can create the arc. It's gonna come down into these curls, swoop over, and be part of this curl fluff over here. Styling out the back real quick. When I am styling my very fine hair, I like to use a very lightweight defrizzing and curl shaping product like this curl jelly from As I Am. Work it through the hair and brush the curls out. Then I distribute a little more curl jelly, combing through the curls with just my fingers to define them more. On short hair like this, keep the style softer and younger by defining out the curls and waves at the top, so you don't just have a solid mass at the crown. To brush out the top, I first break up the four pin curls above the right and style them for the curl fluff. The curl jelly helps the ends stay hydrated and defined. Comb out the arc curls and back comb them to help hold the shape. Comb and press the shape of the arc and wave without disturbing the rest of the hairstyle. With lightweight hair like this, the less force you try to use, the better. I did end up with a small gap at the front, so I am just filling that void. Not bad. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Yeah, I can still see a little bit of that void when I turn my head that, see the thank you roots. I really like the way this looks, so I'm not gonna mess it up. When you get it 97%, just let it go. Hopefully this was all clear. If you have questions, please comment. If you like this video, click that thumbs up so I know you wanna see more content like this. Also, subscribe so you don't miss any new videos as they come out. Thanks for watching. <laughs> oh, that was fun. <laughs>